Welcome to the Short Term Show, the show about short term rentals and long term wealth, with real property owners hosting real properties who are crushing it in the vacation and short term rental space. And here's your host, Avery Carl. This episode of The Short Term Show has been brought to you by your friendly Short Term Shop real estate agent. We are hyper-local and totally dedicated to your success. Whether you want to buy your next short term rental or sell the one you currently own, we would be honored to earn your business. We are in all of the best vacation markets in America. Find us at theshorttermshop.com. That's theshorttermshop.com. Brokered by EXP. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Short Term Show. We have Christiane Crump today. Really excited to interview her. She's got some really cool stuff going on. I just realized, yes, I am wearing my North Face inside while we're recording because it is under 50 degrees in Florida and I can't live in those conditions. So anyway... Without further ado, Christiane, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the invitation to join you today. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on. I'm really excited to have you. So um, let's start off with just a little bit about you. So what led you down the path of getting into the short-term rental space? Yeah, you know, it's so crazy. I never would have predicted that I would be here in the short-term rental space and doing all the things that I'm doing Um I had like this whole prior life where, you know, I have a nursing degree and a science degree and spent a number of years kind of doing that. And then, you know, family came along and the years, you know, just spent raising my boys and enjoying that phase of life. And then, you know, as my, you know, kids were getting older and my husband and I were beginning to look forward to um, what our retirement was likely going to look like and talking with our accountant and our, you know, estate planning you know, experts, they began talking with us about, you know, what we wanted. And my husband was very determined to create some sort of a revenue stream that would follow us into retirement, but that didn't require him to be working. Um, And so as we were looking at what various avenues we could pursue to achieve that goal, uh, we had an accountant that discussed with us the concept of, you know, short-term rental properties you know, rental properties in general, long-term or short-term. But as we looked at those different options, we got really excited about short-term rental properties and how those could potentially, you know, help us achieve that goal. And so the next thing we knew, we were taking uh, our second home that we had purchased years ago and jumping into a remodel on it and preparing to launch that as a short-term rental. And then also actively looking for properties that we could purchase specifically as an investment uh, for short-term rentals. And, you know, I don't know, maybe we're greedy or maybe I just felt like I needed something to do, but I wasn't super excited about hiring a property manager. I was curious enough about this industry and what it entailed that I volunteered and kind of raised my hand and said, you know what, let me do this. Let me learn how to manage these properties and, you know, kind of put me on point with this. My husband was still very much busy with his career. And so I just got super energetic and excited about this and completely went down the rabbit hole, um, learning as much much as I could, as quickly as I could. And, you know, ever since then, I've been running point on the properties that we own and now beginning to step into the space of helping others manage their properties as well. Okay. So a lot of great information there that I have some questions on. The first one, I'm interested to hear about your estate or financial planner actually suggesting real estate, because I know many of them just are very anti-real estate. It's difficult to find one that actually suggests investing in real estate. So was that something that they were pro you doing or did you have to convince them or how did that work? That's actually a really great great question because I know that typically they're going to try to sell you on, you know, different traditional stock market style investments and whatnot. And my husband and I entered our adulting years, basically, at this very interesting phase where, you know, 
when we were launching, we stepped right into the dot-com bubble burst. And so we had money that we were given as newlyweds that we were like, okay, we're going to be so responsible. We'd heard all of the people who said, you know, if you invest when you're in your twenties and just let it sit there and compound them by the time you retire, you'll be a multimillionaire. And so we're like, oh, eating that up. And we threw this money into the traditional investment type portfolio stuff and immediately watched it chop in half in like 12 months. And it oh, was no. so disheartening to feel like, wow, we just did exactly what everybody told us to do. And that completely blew up in our faces. And so then we just, you know, whatever, move on, no real way to recover it, you know, cause we're just still in, you know, going through college. And so all of a sudden we've just lost half of this nest egg that we were looking forward to. Um, and at the time it was thinking that we would use that. We'd put it, we'd invest it, get through school, get through grad school, and then have this nice tidy sum to be the down payment on our first home. Totally didn't work out that way. So, but there we were finishing school going, you know, my husband went to grad school and when he finished, it was right during the, you know, housing fiasco that was unfolding oh in like 06, 07, 08. So both times that we were making pivotal changes in our lives, we were like knee deep in this craziness that was happening with housing and the stocks and all these things. And it really like scarred us, maybe you could say, in the sense that all of the things that our parents grew up thinking were the right way to grow financial security and to be responsible adults, it just wasn't panning out. And we watched his father who was, you know, feeling like he should have been at the age of retiring. Well, now his traditional investments were totally, you know, a quarter to a half of what, well, probably not a quarter, at least a half um, or 60% of what he thought they were going to be. And he ended up working for almost another decade. So it's like, we don't want to go down that road. And so when the real, when the uh, retirement planners and whatnot were pitching us kind of that, you know, buy, buy into this mutual fund or buy into this, whatever. We're like, you know what? We we're happy to throw a little money there, but we do not want that to be our primary strategy. We don't want to hang our hat on something we have no control over. You know, I can't guarantee how these companies are going to run their businesses and I can't control some of the broader things of the economy, but we felt like real estate, especially when we, you know, are managing it ourselves, I can control that. I can do a great job. I can, you know, choose specifically where I want to invest. And to us, based on the lived experience that we'd had over our, you know, prior years, that really felt more secure and like something that we felt confident in doing. Wow. So I've never, I've heard people say hypothetically, well, you know, if I invest in stocks and I do all these things that can cut in half overnight, but I've never heard anyone anecdotally say, well, this is what happened to me twice in a row, two different scenarios. And that's why I don't do the stock thing so heavily anymore. That's why I do real estate. So I think already that's a really, really valuable nugget for our listeners. And I, I kind of had the same, well, not the same experience. I didn't have the opportunity to get started because I graduated undergrad in spring of 2009. And so there were just no jobs. And then when it finally swung back around and I'd been bartending forever and then went back to grad school so that I could get into corporate America, uh, we finally saved up, you know, like 10 grand. And we went to a, uh, a financial planner who was just like an Edward Jones. I probably shouldn't say the name, whatever, an Edward Jones office that was in the, the building that my corporate job was in. And the financial advisor told us we didn't have enough money for her to bother with us, which was like really, you know, as people who are starting their financial journey and not really knowing where to go. I was a huge Dave Ramsey head at the time, not anymore, obviously, but it was really discouraging. And then that's why we went and bought a piece of real estate because we had about half of a down payment saved up for a single family long-term. And that's why we went the other way. So a little bit different experience than you, but like we were told you don't have enough money for us to bother with, with this whole stock thing. And thank goodness they, that she said that because we might not have ever gotten started in real estate otherwise, but already, already a great guest. I love it. <laughs> well, don't you feel like it's almost the pretty woman moment? Like I love the part in the movie where she tries to go shopping and no one will help her. And then she comes back later and goes back to that store and holds up all those bags. And she's like, big mistake, you know, huge. And all the <laughs> saleswomen are just like their jaws are on the floor. And 
And we had the exact same experience, you know, my husband, because of the profession is, and he, we, we just get like cold, like postcards, you know, inviting us to a dinner or whatever, to talk to these investment professionals. And we actually, I can remember sitting in an office holding one of our infants, you know, talking to this guy. And as, as the conversation wrapped up, he's like, you know, you're probably not a good client for me. You guys don't have, you know, however many hundred thousand dollars. And it's like, well, yeah, we're just starting. And if you don't care about us when we're just starting, there is literally no way on earth that we're ever going to come back to you when we finally established ourselves professionally. I think that's very short-sighted. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that if somebody's looking to start this early, this is probably someone who has the attributes that you're going to want in a client later, someone who's going to get to the point of having the money that's worth it to you as an investment professional. I don't... I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to short-term rentals. Already, like, <laughs> I think that that's super valuable for our listeners, though, to hear. So let's talk about that vacation home that you had that you turned into a rental. So where is that and what is it? Yeah. So we had decided years ago when our kids were little that we wanted to find a like a family cabin. And so we're in Idaho and um, everybody's probably heard of Sun Valley, but like a mountain range over from Sun Valley, Idaho is a smaller kind of more local vacation community. It's the McCall Donnelly Cascade area. There's, you know, beautiful boating and mountains, two ski resorts. And, you know, for us, it was, you know, an easy drive up to that area. So we began looking and um, sold some property that we had in Washington and had the equity out of that. And that's what we flipped into purchasing that property in 2014. But, you know, we were very selfish with that property initially. It was our place. I had clothes in the closet. I had, you know, my kids toys and all of our ski stuff and all of our, you know, summer stuff, it just kind of lived there. And so when we wanted to get away, we had to do nothing. I just had to grab a gallon of milk out of the fridge and a box of cereal and we were on our way. And we utilized that property that way for years. And, you know, occasionally we would have friends that we would let stay, but by and large, we just loved going up there and utilizing it. And it, and it wasn't until our accountant, you know, kind of turned us on to this that we finally decided, okay, you know, I'm willing to move out of our second home and do the remodel and, and use it as an investment property. So, you know, for a lot of years, it was just, which I mean, great on us now that we bought it so long ago, because the profitability that we have out of that property is outrageous because we bought it at 2014 prices. Um, so, yeah, it's just great as a short-term rental. I don't know why we waited so long to to turn it into one, but you know, it's a great resource for us financially now. Awesome. And I, I love that because so many people start on the other side of it and say, I want to make an investment. I need to make it make this much money. And then they then they start looking for markets and then they start looking for properties. And I think especially with vacation rentals, which I I like to separate the vacation rental asset class from just the short-term rental asset class, because I classify vacation rentals as something entirely different in vacation markets. You know, these are not business travelers. These are not insurance uh, displaced people. They're vacationers. And I, that's my favorite type of asset class. Anyway, uh, I, I think it's very important for people to buy in markets and buy properties that they believe in which you know would be a property that you would want to use yourself, a property in a market that you love, that means something to you because it's going to be difficult for you to care enough and to market a property to guests if you don't care about it yourself. So if it's not something that you care about, how are you going to get other people to be excited about renting it? There's a certain amount of authenticity, I think, that comes from people who invest based on like, oh, I love going to this market. It's important to me. And the numbers kind of work too. So let's do this. Yeah. So I really like that. So you mentioned that you bought other ones since then. Where have you bought? How many do you have? What does that look like? Yeah. So we invested in Gulf Shores, Alabama as well. And it was, it's kind of crazy. I'm not the poster child for what I believe now in the sense that, you know, the accountant was like, okay, at the time it was all about bonus depreciation. You know, we were doing this for the financial things and, you know, the long-term investment. And so he looked at what our tax burden was going to be in 2022. And he said, okay, buy a property that's this expensive. It will give you the cost that you're going to need. So we were just looking around like, okay, this is our, what we should be spending. And so we found a property and we invested in it and it turned out to be 
um, a great investment, but we really didn't run the numbers and do the classic things that they say that everybody should do. We basically, you know, kind of just went with the flinch of, hey, here's a property. It's, you know, first tier oceanfront. It will always be desirable. It, you know, was kind of underpriced for what it should have been marketed at. And so instead of running the numbers and doing the full performa, we just went on that gut of like, this is the kind of place that we would want to be at. And this is the kind of home that we would go on vacation in. So we made an offer, sight unseen. Um, it was one of those classic situations where there was still a lot of people pouring into that market, 10 competing offers. We wrote in an escalation clause. Um, we ended up paying about 100K over what we anticipated paying, but still, um, thankfully, that property performed so well that the numbers work out for us. But I would, I, it's a cautionary tale because I would never suggest anyone do that. You know, knowing now what I know, um, we were just really fortunate that it worked out for us as well as we did. And and that property we still own and hold and, and I remotely manage from Idaho. I manage that Alabama property and it's just been great. This episode is brought to you by the premier short-term rental Facebook group, Short-Term Rental Long-Term Wealth. We have nearly 50,000 members. This is the biggest independently owned and operated SCR Facebook group, and it has been curated by yours truly, Cashflow Car. Join us on Facebook. Search the groups for Short-Term Rental Long-Term Wealth. That's Short-Term Rental Long-Term Wealth on Facebook. If you like what you're hearing, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, you can join me on a live weekly call to talk about your next short-term rental or ask questions about the one you already have. I am live once per week on Zoom. I would love to have you come and say hello. It's strquestions.com. That's strquestions.com. Come and join us. I think it is still very important because you mentioned it again separately from the Idaho property that it is somewhere you'd want to vacation. And I mean, there's there's properties that I bought in the past I mean, before there was any kind of data, really. I think it, we bought our first one in 2015 and I think AirDNA existed, but it was either like way too expensive or in its infancy or something and we just didn't have access to it. And you, we kind of had to go on that qualitative feel rather than quantitative. Like, okay, we're buying this property. It's in a vacation market. If I'm a guest, do I want to rent this? And there's just, I really do think that the qualitative side of analysis when it comes to short-term rentals is as important as that qualitative data side. They're both very important. I'm not by any means saying that data isn't important because you 100% need that, but you'd also need the why. So you've got the how much but you need that why side. And I really think like my husband calls it the football test. If it's a property that he can envision himself sitting down and watching Nebraska football, then he, other people will probably like it too. And I think that that's an oft overlooked important piece of it. Although yes, of course you need to have it. You need to know that it's going to perform the way you want it to. But again, there is that very important qualitative part of it. Well, especially if you're investing in a vacation market, vacations are a very emotional thing. You know, when I'm going on vacation, I'm envisioning that time with my family and I kind of create this charmed notion. And, and so I wanted, you know, we wanted to invest in places and properties that, you know, are the kinds of places that we would want to go and were exciting to us. I mean, it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So guys, I'm not saying neglect the data side. Don't comment on this and say that I said that because that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the rest of it is very, very important too. So you've got the two or do you have more than that? Did you say? So, you know what? We took a pass. We did not invest in 2023. Um, okay. The reason that why we didn't, I mean, that could be a whole nother show. I mean, it, there was so much uncertainty in the economy. There was uncertainty in what housing prices were going to do. And so we, we actually decided to just hold and not invest in 2023, but we still have the strategy of, you know, we want to have a certain number of properties prior to my husband retiring and, and be able to realize a certain amount of revenue out of those properties um, to take us into retirement. It's still part of our retirement strategy. And I'm super excited to hear that there's the potential that the 100% bonus appreciation is going to come back. 
Yes. I'm very excited to hear that too, because especially with it being retroactive, because we did buy some stuff last year that I would like to get 100% on. I mean, don't we all? Um, so I'm, I'm super excited about that. And we'll, it's yet to be seen. Maybe actually, I think by the time this airs, we will have an answer on that. I think it's, um, January 29th. So we'll see. I predict that it's coming back. That's my prediction. By the time this airs listeners, you'll know whether I was right or wrong. We'll see. (laughs) So let's move on and talk about STR hub. So Because of your background and love for investing in these types of properties, you've started the STR Hub website. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that is and and what it does for us? Absolutely. So strhub.com, that's the name of my website. Um, It really was born out of my journey of needing to get into this space and get educated really quickly. And honestly, when I first got started, I just, you know, created this little network and found my little hive or tribe as it were, and leaned super heavily on them and put together my systems and operations based on what everyone around me was using and doing. And which was fine because I definitely got up and rolling. But then as I, as the dust settled, I began looking around and realizing, oh my gosh, I didn't even know about this solution or this property management software or this, you know, whatever, whatever. And I decided I don't know. It's just my personality. It was frustrating to me that um, if I had known about those things, maybe I would have made some different choices. And the more research I did, the more stunned I was at the array of options. And I felt like I could see so many people struggling with the decisions about, you know, what they should use and how they should operationally put together, you know, particularly people who are trying to self-manage. And so STR Hub, the goal with STR Hub was basically as I got doing my own research and the the stack of research just grew and grew, I would see people asking questions in Facebook groups and I would, oh, I know the answer to this or I have, let me share with them what I've learned. And I would type up this amazing reply and, you know, post it and then 20 minutes later, it's buried in, at, behind like 20 other comments. And I was like, that was such a waste. I spent all that time posting that and typing that up. And now like four people saw it. And so I wanted to create a place where I could aggregate the information that I'd gathered in a way that would be meaningful and out there indefinitely. And I also wanted to create a place where other people could do the same thing. Like it breaks my heart when I see people chiming in on Facebook and then poof, you know, a couple minutes later, all that awesome feedback, like lived experiences basically just lost in the feed. So the goal with STR Hub was to organize information about all the technology, you know, pieces that we need to, you know, property manage or host our properties, but then also create a place where we could create kind of like these awesome directories of, you know, accountants, realtors, lenders, bookkeepers, photographers, cleaners, you know, and so I created this structure and this framework. And of course, it's not done. There's new companies always popping up. There's new super service providers who are finding our website and submitting the information so we can add them to our directories. But, you know, I also wanted to build in a review feature. So if you've worked with a bookkeeper or if you've used a particular property management software, instead of posting in the random Facebook group where your comments and input are going to be gone in 20 seconds, take a minute and leave a review on STR Hub. So it's like permanently there attached to that particular company or product and will be really helpful for people who come along behind you, you know, months later, they'll still easily be able to read and find that feedback. So that was kind of the core goal that we had with STR Hub. And we're still continuing to grow and, you know, improve it as a resource and continue to refine it. Um, We have some additional web web development that's going to be coming along later this year um, that's going to improve it even more. But it really just, we're trying to grow this community and this place where people can, you know, quickly and easily scan all of the options that they have, features, pros and cons, all of that information into one place and be able to share what they know about the things that they're using with all the other people who are looking for the similar information. That's like the nutshell. Yeah, well, that's that's really great to kind of bring it all to one place so everybody can kind of see, you know, what's going on in each market. And I mean, that seems like a beast to try and and take that on in terms of just like all of the markets that are out there. Is are you feeling the overwhelm or are you how's that going? You know what? I just have to breathe, right? 
everybody has a day one. Everybody starts from somewhere. Um, like I said, the website's not done. And really, it will only continue to improve and get better as more and more people discover it and show up and start leaving their input and their feedback and, you know, adding their information. I love how entrepreneurial our um, industry is. There is so many people who are amazing hosts and property managers that have decided to branch out into revenue management or, you know, all these other things they're bringing, they're coming from all these industries and have these broad skill sets. And, you know, so having a place where we can quickly find these people who can help us, I just love that. And so I think the reason that it didn't exist prior to my efforts was because it's so huge and massive. And I had to just give myself grace and space to be like, okay, it doesn't need to be everything the day it launches. It needs to, you know, be a starting place. And, you know, then we can just grow from there. And people, I mean, I am always wanting people to chime in with, you know, what they've learned. And like I said, their feedback, because that's really where it just gets amazing and will continue to just become a more and more valuable resource for the industry. Well, I think that that is a really good segue into the last three questions of the show. So the first one is, what advice would you give 20-year-old Christiane? Yeah, um, I think the thing that I would tell myself is, like, take a minute. Take a minute to really learn who you are. Discover what lights you up. Discover what you're passionate about. Um because I feel like I ran through my twenties doing what everyone told me I should do, you know, whether it was the career that I chose, whether it was the things that I, you know, I don't know, so many decisions that I made, what I felt like was either the path of least resistance or what met the expectations um, that I felt like I had on me instead of really like taking a minute and trying to discover who I am. And so I could own that truth and step forward boldly and confidently and craft the life and the, um, future that really felt true to me. Not that I regret the choices that I made, but I've had to kind of unpick a few things and um, pivot a little bit to make sure that my life and everything about it is really honest to who I truly am. So that would be my advice to my 20-year-old self. That is great advice. And so this question is a little bit similar, but different and a little more specific in a way. So what advice would you give a new investor who's looking to get into short-term rental investing today at the beginning of 2024? Yeah. So it would kind of go back to my cautionary tale of like the flinch decision that we did to buy that property in Gulf Shores. Like thank our lucky stars that it's panned out and is a fantastic property, but I would never do that again. <laughs> so the advice that I would give to someone is there is always going to be another deal. And I think that's what motivated us to like, make an offer on a property sight unseen and like throw in with 10 other competing offers. I wouldn't do that again. I honestly don't think that situation would happen in 2024, but there's always going to be another deal. There's always going to be another market where you can find an amazing property that's going to work for you. So don't feel like you have to flinch. Take the time to run the numbers, learn about the market, learn about the regulations in that market, all these awesome, very important due diligence things. That would be my advice, especially as we're here in 2024. Also very good advice. And last one's a little more fun. What's your favorite book that's impacted your mindset? Um, you know what? I am going to throw out Think and Grow Rich. It's, I think that's like the worst title in the world. Um, but as far as mindset, it's like an OG. Like we kind of have this whole industry built around mindset now, and there's a million and one gurus who are writing books and whatever about mindset. But Napoleon Hill, when he wrote Think and Grow Rich, it's like an old book. And so I feel like it's very purist in the sense of, you know, he was one of those first people talking about the importance of mentality and the importance of mind shift. And so I'm really thankful that I took the time to kind of read and study that. I dove into it over a course of a few months and really tried to implement, you know, some of the things that that book talks about. And that was part of what gave me the courage to start STR Hub was, you know, I could kind of mentally 
get in that space and own what that journey was going to be like before I actually even started executing on that. So, you know, like I said, it's a ridiculous title. I don't want people to, you know, hear that think and go rich and, and get put off by it, but take the time if you haven't already to find that book and, and read it because there's some nuggets in there that I really think a lot of that, you know, mindset, you know, industry that we have now was really born out of kind of that original concept that that he put forth in that book. It really is a great book. Guys, if you haven't read it, you need to. I'm sure you have. If you're listening to this podcast, you should have. If not, take Christiane's advice and check it out. So Christiane, thank you so much for coming on. And where can our listeners find you if they want to follow you, social media, do all of those social media things? Yeah, absolutely. So of course, um, strhub.com is a great place to go. Um, you can find me there. And um, also I'm just at Christiane on the regular social media channels. So um, Facebook, Instagram, love to meet up with you guys and uh, connect there in any way that I can help. Also Christiane at strhub.com. I have a crazy name. It's very unusual. So it's C H R I S. T-I-A-N-N-E. So Christiane Crump, um, at Christiane Crump on the social media channels, but then also Christiane at strhub.com. Happy to help in any way that I can. All right, got it. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.